everybody my name is Mindy and welcome to the way of the nerd today I'm going to concentrate on forest secret wear and um, I hope you'll enjoy the video I'm outside because it's like <laughs> one of the last days that I can do a video intro in this house because we'll be moving soon um, anyway <laughs> That's really distracting. Um, <laughs> anyway, just like the clues are, or clues, hints, whatever you want to call them, are sprinkled throughout the book, I'm going to sprinkle some of my personal search photos throughout the video uh, with uh, descriptions of where they are till the end because this very last thing I want to do is uh, show you a picture from Dale's and it's from one of four scrapbooks and um, it it's like a picture word puzzle, I guess you could say. And I want to see if you can figure it out. And um, I'll show you my interpretation of it. Okay, let's get started and see what we can figure out from the first stanza of the uh, forest poem. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Mindy and welcome to the Way of the Nerd. Today we're going to talk about the first stanza in Forest Fen's poem which can be found in The Thrill of the Chase, a memoir. I'd like to tell you why I believe the first stanza may be the most important stanza in the entire poem. I'll do my best to explain, but you'll have to open your mind for a few minutes, put aside all your biases, and just listen. All of the following quotes are from The Thrill of the Chase, a memoir by Forrest Fenn. As I have gone alone in there. Remember, in the beginning, all we had was the book. No interviews, no scrapbooks, no Jenny Kyle. Well, Jenny Kyle, I guess, was there, but no six questions, no weekly words, etc., etc. So in the book, he said he sprinkled clues throughout to help, right? So let's look in the book and see exactly where and when he says he was alone. It's also important to note what he was doing when he was alone. So I will emphasize uh, those activities in all caps. Page 15. So now I sit here past midnight beside my juniper fire reflecting back to the year when my awareness took its first few steps. Page 27. I was proud to have thought of that idea all by myself. Page 56. It was on a long, straight stretch of road with no cars or people around anywhere. I remember sitting down for about an hour to consider my lot in life and ponder if anything was left of my future. Page 78 Later, in one's reverie, those memories can come sparking back when ignited by something innocently said or something thought. So it is with me now, as I sit here past midnight, alone with only myself to know. Page 97. I remember the air was quiet, even over the large populated areas. No one was around. No one was on the radio. No one to talk to. The impersonal lights were there, but I was all alone. Immediately after that, he covered Philadelphia with his thumb, and it took him to another dimension in my mind, a place I would not visit again until the grave marker entered my life. Years later, I would meld those thoughts into one, the sum of which would change my life. Page 102. No one else think my thoughts, so I am myself only to me. Page 112. Candor requires that I admit to having touched the painting. It happened in my office when no one else was around. This was exciting to me, and by touching it, I could imagine, in some small way, that I was a part of that company. 
I feel sorry for those that don't understand that depth of imagination. Page 124 There comes a time, maybe it's an age, when all of us reflect on the happenings that marked our passage through the bright thickets of life. Most are conjured up by reverential spirits and are reserved for times when we happen upon the solitude of just ourselves. A passing mood will bring thoughts of loved ones floating back to dominate a few moments of our time. The reveries are too many to be counted, but each one occupies a far corner of my mind, waiting for another time. I love things when they do that. Page 125 Those great places, which were personal secrets to me then, are now busy with the tourists of fishermen and women. I always thought that space was mine alone, and many of the memories there bred are even now so personal that they exclude the intrusion of strangers. So, every single time Forrest mentions being alone in the book, it's referring to thoughts and memories. He's gone alone into his mind as he remembers times past. In there refers to his memories, his mind, his memoir. As I have gone alone in there, and with my treasures bold, I can keep my secret where and hint of riches new and old. Now let's look at a quote on page 133. Page 133. There are other subtle clues sprinkled in the stories. The last two lines of the poem are the clincher. When he published his memoir, he had no idea of the cult-like following he would attract. He didn't have any idea that massive throngs of people would search for the chest. He didn't know there would be a Today Show. He didn't know that a myriad of blogs would go up. He didn't know he would write scrapbooks and answer Jenny's questions or have any idea he would have an opportunity to hand out hints through those avenues. So where did he put the hints he talked about in this stanza? There is only one place, his memoir. That's why he has told people the scrapbooks and the blogs are mostly useless, because he has to in order for the poem to be solved in the way he intended. He has to tell people there are only two places to find clues and hints, the book and the poem in his book. He has clarified that it is the poem in the book on Forrest Gets Mail 10 on Dale's blog. You can find that in the description below. I'll post a link. Notice how in the answer to the first question he subtly says, You need to read my book. The word where may also be an important word to consider when solving the poem. Notice in the following quote, he does not say he was leaving clues on where to find the treasure, but how to find the treasure. Page 129. So I decided to fill a treasure chest with gold and jewels, then secret it, leaving clues on how to find it for any searcher willing to try. It was a perfect match of mind and moment. So the first stanza points you to his memoir. He went alone into his memory, his mind, and there he can hint of his secret where. When you have a secret, it's held in your mind. You can't tell anybody because then it wouldn't be a secret anymore. And that's important to consider looking at this poem as a whole. The poem revolves around a secret where, which we need to find. In my opinion, the first stanza can't be about anything other than his memoir. Because when the book was written, Forrest had no idea how big this would grow. He didn't know he would have more opportunities to give out hints. So yes, you do need the book to solve the poem, in my opinion. Remember, Forrest said he learned from his father that he should always tell the truth, but not always tell all of the truth. It's amazing to me how many people skip right over this or deny it altogether. 
For some reason, they continue to believe that everything Forrest says are straight-up facts and irrefutable truth. On the very first page of his fictional memoir, Forrest writes that the stories are as true to history as one man can average out the truth, and that he tends to embellish just a little. That very telling sentence follows with, Nevertheless, the story about my treasure chest is true. What does that mean? I know what it means, and it looks pretty straightforward to me. So why do people ignore this very important paragraph? Forrest himself implies it's a very important paragraph when he says J.D. Salinger had a great way of starting a book, to get right down into the fling of it. The first paragraph on the first page of Forrest's memoir is getting right down into the fling of it. When he said all you need is the poem, he is not telling all of the truth. The introduction to the recipe can be found in the first stanza. It serves to tell you what else you need in order to complete the recipe. Forrest has also used the recipe analogy for cake baking as an analogy for solving the poem. You can say a recipe is all you need to figure out how to make a cake. But that's not really all of the truth, is it? For example, you can tell a friend about a delicious cake that you recently had, but she needs to go online to find the recipe, which details the instructions on how to bake that cake. Once you have the recipe, follow it precisely and your conglomerate of ingredients mixed together and put into an oven will come out as something useful, that delicious cake. So, to wrap up, in there, he could keep his secret where and hint at riches new and old. If Forrest had stuck with its original idea to die with a chest, hints would only be found in one place, his memoir. Okay, so now we're ready for the bonus content I was telling you about, and it has everything to do with what I've been saying. Can you find the hint in this scrapbook pic from Dale's blog. All right, now I'll tell you what he's saying with that picture. He's saying, check my book. Also note how he reaffirms his book is still his book over the years. What is the name of a book that recounts personal reflections and stories collected over many years? A memoir. The word that is he is memoir. It is, after all, part of the title. All right, you guys, that's it for today. I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you next time on The Way of the Nerd. Be kind to everyone and stay curious.